Here's more wrestling news for September 6, 2022. And we're starting this afternoon with video game news, as fans are eager for the release of AEW Fight Forever, which is rumored to be hitting shelves at some point this year. With an investment of at least $10 million in their gaming department, AEW are counting on Fight Forever to be a success, but the game's roster isn't what many had expected. It's previously been reported that FTR had been pulled from the game due to issues with the moveset captures and animations, and they're not the only names out. Fightful Select reports that in addition to FTR, Evil Uno, Jake Hager, Private Party, The Acclaimed, and Santana and Ortiz will also not be involved in the first release of the game. No reason has been given to the others, but we know that FTR were pulled despite making it to the model phase of production, though it is reported that the plan is for them to make it as DLC. There's no word on whether the others will become DLC as well, but Fightful added that Stu Grayson, who left AEW in May, had not been planned for the game prior to his departure. AEW Fight Forever will be the company's first console video game and will boast some of the biggest names in the promotion, but for fans of the aforementioned talent, they won't get to play as their favorite stars, at least not at launch. Now, as of late, we've heard a lot about CM Punk not liking people in AEW, but he's not the only one with an axe to grind. Eddie Kingston has never shied away from making himself clear, even earning himself a two-week suspension recently due to his reaction to a promo by Sammy Guevara. Speaking to Pro Wrestling Illustrated Presents podcast, Kingston spoke about his often frosty relationship with others in wrestling, including CM Punk. I don't hate on anyone who makes it and makes money. That doesn't bother me. It's who they are as people that bothers me. I don't care if people do better than me with money and all that stuff. I will never hate on that because this is a business and we all got to try and make a living. But I will not like and I will not stand for people who are judgmental like Brian Danielson. CM Punk, who I think is a liar because he's lying to everybody, showing that he's a nice guy. Claudio Castagnoli wants to go around telling everybody he's this nice, lovable guy when I know for a fact that I've seen things in the past that he's not a good person, so he's lying to people. I won't stand for that. I don't need anyone else to believe me, but I know what's real. Kingston has made his views of Punk, Castagnoli, and others very clear, and is unlikely to change his mind anytime soon but hopefully he can keep his emotions in check following his recent suspension. Last week, Kurt Angle returned to Raw and had a segment with Edge that was a throwback to their early days. Recreating a segment from the April 4, 2002 SmackDown, Edge showed Kurt images from their friendship while the Olympian was unaware of the less-than-flattering comments on the back of the cards. During his podcast, Kurt said that the idea to recreate the segment was Edge's own creation and called it a great idea. Even after 20 years, Edge was able to get one over on Kurt Angle again, and perhaps the next time the two come face to face will be different for the Olympian. Ever since Triple H took over as head of talent, several superstars have had their names changed. Theory is Austin Theory once more, and Ciampa got his Tommaso first name back on last night's Raw, but there are others who are dealing with their Vince McMahon era monikers. One such individual is Butch, who had his name changed from Pete Dunne because of McMahon's no real names policy, but don't expect him to be the bruiserweight again yet. Sources told Fightful that nothing has been said regarding Butch having his name changed back to Pete Dunne at this time, despite him wrestling in his Pete Dunne era attire on last week's SmackDown. When Fightful asked about T-Bar, who wrestled as Dominic Dijakovic, they were given no response as to whether his name will be changed in this new era of WWE. While the vast majority of fans would love to see Butch and T-Bar be Dunn and Dijakovic again, that doesn't seem to be the plan right now, though anything could change in this new WWE. Now, the WWE 24-7 Championship was introduced back in 2019, but the title has not been featured on TV much as of late. It's been nearly two months since the last televised title match, where Dana Brooke won the gold from Tamina on the July 18th Raw, leading to speculation that the gold isn't long for this world. It turns out that this could be the case, as Fightful reports that while the 24-7 title is being defended at live events, complete with title changes, these aren't being recognized by WWE. Many see this as a sign that Triple H, who is head of creative and the new chief content officer, doesn't have long-term plans for the title. It's not confirmed whether or not Triple H is planning on retiring the title or if he'll just be using it for live event purposes. While the title is still available from WWE's merchandise team, current champion Dana Brooke may never get a chance to defend her title on TV again, and she could even be the last 24-7 champion. 
In January, Road Dog Jesse James was released by WWE as part of cuts to NXT's backstage crew. James was recently rehired as WWE's new Senior Vice President of Live Events, but the Hall of Famer recently worked on a very special project. Speaking on his Oh You Didn't Know podcast, Road Dog discussed his recent work with the A&E Biographies WWE Legends series and revealed he got emotional speaking about an old friend. I shot the AEW documentary that's going to be coming out on China. They came to my house and I didn't think I was gonna, I was gonna cry, but it got me man. Some of that survivor's guilt comes back, you know what I mean? I did every horrible thing she ever did, why me? It got me yesterday and the guy said, oh man, that's gonna be good TV. China worked for WWE from 1997 to 2001, becoming the first and so far only woman to win the Intercontinental Championship and compete in the King of the Ring tournament. After a difficult exit from WWE, China would never return to the company and passed away in April 2016 before being posthumously inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2019 as part of DX. Perhaps one day China will be inducted on her own, as many people, including Mick Foley, have suggested, but until then, fans will get to learn more about her in the Biographies series. It's safe to say that Tony Khan has a lot going on in AEW right now, between Punk's comments, MJF's recent return, and several top names like Thunder Rosa and Adam Cole on the shelf. Despite this, Khan is keeping one eye on WWE and isn't exactly thrilled with how he's being treated by the sports entertainment juggernaut. During the pre-all-out conference call, Khan said he'd received bad treatment from WWE and when speaking on the post-show media scrum, repeated those same claims. I've had a number of interactions with them. I've said a lot of nice stuff, and I don't regret saying nice stuff because I'm super honest about pro wrestling. And when I saw good stuff happening there, I'll be the first to say it. But yeah, I'm just not feeling the same love. I don't want to get into it, but, you know, I just haven't felt the same reciprocation that I have for them. It has been reported that WWE has been speaking with AEW wrestlers and trying to make them offers, with Chris Jericho indicating that his former employer has reached out to him about a return. During the recent pre-Dynamite talent meeting, AEW's chief legal officer Mega Parekh said that they'd reached out to WWE about alleged contract tampering, but have not received a response. Khan, despite allowing AEW talent to appear on Raw earlier this year, isn't feeling the love by WWE, so we'll just have to see how the two companies operate in relation to each other going forward. CM Punk's comments at the All Out Media Scrum came after a difficult month or so in AEW, as there's been plenty of reports about backstage conflict in the company. Prior to Punk exploding on several AEW stars, we already knew of his issues with Paige, and it was recently reported that Thunder Rosa and Britt Baker have very real beef as well. On the post All Out Scrum, Tony Khan apparently confirmed the reports of issues behind the scenes, saying, that's a dicey situation and it is contentious and frankly challenging, but I have to do what's best for the sake of the company and everybody you're talking about are great professional wrestlers with big reputations and some of them have been around from the beginning and some of them have been around for about a year now. The fact is, these are people that drive revenue and they help create jobs for everyone. When people don't get along or don't like each other, I've had people said as much stuff about me over the last few months as anybody and sometimes you have to take it and move on with business and that's part of it. Khan went on to say that it's hardly a secret that pro wrestlers don't get along at times, but insisted that business comes first and that he's able to look past comments about him for the sake of AEW. Tony Khan is confident that AEW can move forward, even with wrestlers not getting along, but that's a risky strategy for the promoter who was once touting just how much of a family AEW is. Now at All Out, Christian Cage defeated Jungle Boy in an incredibly quick bout, squashing the former World Tag Team Champion in just 20 seconds. Cage's win came after Luchasaurus attacked Jungle Boy, powerbombing him through a table, giving Christian all the advantage he needed to win. Cage didn't take a single bump and had a brace on his right arm, and Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful notes that Christian was nursing a legitimate injury entering the event. Given the nature of the win, it's likely that Cage vs. Jungle Boy will face off again, possibly at the Full Gear pay-per-view, but we'll have to wait until the former WWE World Champion is fully healed before we see this match. This week's Raw also had a tag team seemingly break up, but you'd be forgiven for not noticing it at first. During one segment, Bayley, Dakota Kai, and Io Sky were seen walking backstage, but eagle-eyed fans will have spotted Nikki A.S.H. and Dewdrop behind them. As Damage Control walked, Nikki could be seen taking off her superhero mask and throwing it at Dewdrop, possibly a sign that their team has come to an end. 
It remains to be seen whether a split is on the cards for Nikki and Dewdrop, and if throwing her mask off will mark the end of Nikki's time as an almost superhero. Next year, WWE will launch NXT Europe, their newest brand of entertainment, which has led to the demise of NXT UK. WWE is investing a lot in NXT Europe, and while a launch date is still unclear, we have got a better understanding of plans for the show. Speaking on the post-Clash at the Castle press conference, Triple H discussed the upcoming brand and said that NXT Europe is expected to compete with Raw and SmackDown. I think the long-term goal in that is to be in markets all around the world with products that can eventually be competing against each other. World Cup-type scenarios that are feeding into Raw and SmackDown into WrestleMania. NXT UK was around for years, but the show had little influence on the main roster other than a handful of superstars like Dewdrop, Gunther, and Rhea Ripley starting their WWE careers across the pond. We'll have to see just how much of a World Cup vibe NXT Europe brings, but when the new show does launch, don't be surprised to see Raw and SmackDown talent get involved. And we're ending today with Roman Reigns, who retained the undisputed WWE Universal Championship at Clash of the Castle against the very game Drew McIntyre. Reigns had to overcome McIntyre, an incredibly hostile UK crowd, and an attempted cash-in by Austin Theory to leave Cardiff as champion, but fans won't be seeing him back in the ring soon. During the latest Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer confirmed reports that Reigns isn't scheduled to defend his title at next month's Extreme Rules Premium Live event. Instead, fans will have to wait until November 5th's Crown Jewel in Saudi Arabia for the Tribal Chief's next match, over two months after retaining against McIntyre. There is no word on who Reigns will face, though it appears the WWE is planning a Karrion Cross World title match, but expect more months without any in-ring action from WWE's biggest star. Well guys, that's our news for today. Please share your comments below. Also hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon to receive all notifications. And as always, thanks for watching.